All right, guys, I've had some people ask me about the cutlass, what we've done to it. So we'll go through a few things. I'll let you know what we've done from when we got it to where it's at now. We got more plans for it, but for now, I'll show you what we got and we'll show you that today. Right, guys we're back first of all i want to give you just a little history on this car i've had it for 27 years it was my first car my parents bought it for me it wouldn't run worth the crap it's my first car ever that's why i have some kind of sentimental value it has some value to me differently so some guys ask me why didn't you build a monte carlo a super sport a grand national well that's not what i had and i have a connection with this car right here so that's why i went with this car and a I've ran with it since. All right guys, so yesterday we did the video and I forgot a few things. One thing that I thought was important to add was a little bit of the history. My parents actually bought a 1983 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme back when I was about five years old. And it was white with maroon interior, had the 3.8 liter, the V6 that a lot of those cars came with. I was five years old and I, I thought that car was awesome. I remember our parents took us to California in it. It drove smooth. I just, I love that car. And my, my dad fixed a lot of cars. He would buy cars, fix them. So in the 80s, he had Firebird, Trans Am, square body trucks that he would fix and sell. And I like all those cars. I like every car pretty much. But this car caught my attention. So when I became a teenager, I wanted a Cutlass. And I told my parents that I wanted an 83 just because that's what we had. So that's part of the history of why it's an 83 Cutlass, not an 84, 85, six, anything else. I wanted an 83 just like we had, not the color or anything, but I wanted the year model. And so it's, it's identical to what we had, except the colors, interior and exterior. And also this car came with 3.8 and it didn't run faster than 30, 35 miles an hour on the highway. And my sisters, three out of the four were little at the time and they just wanted to ride home in that car. And that new car, which was old car, but to them was brand new. They were so excited. I remember them in the back seat. And we drove home going 30, 35, all the way home from Lubbock. It's an hour drive, but it took us a lot longer than an hour. And also when I was about to graduate and I was gonna go to school, we built a 350 engine and we paired it up with the 350 transmission. And the transmission, the 350, of course, has no overdrive. So it was kind of eating me up in gas. So my dad and I got a 200 for our transmission and put that in. We ran it that way. We had to shorten the drive shaft. So we got that shortened and rebalanced. And then later, I, for some reason, just wanted a 700 R4 with it. So I took that one out. We got a 700 R4, bought a new torque converter and a kit to rebuild it. So dad and I took it all apart, new clutches, we put new everything the kit had and drove that one. And then later, years, years later, it broke. So we got another one, we did the same thing, put it on. So we've done a lot of different things to this car till we went to this 4L60E that we currently have now. And when we went to that, we had to get another drive shaft and because it's a little bit longer so they had, they had to just make us a new one so that's a little bit of history on that just wanted to share that 
I don't remember my dad ever buying a car and he could not fix it. So everything he bought, he would fix and sell. Just a little bit of history on that that I kind of left out and I wanted to put that in there. Now we can return back to the video. One of the first things we did was the LS swap like we talked about. I'll show you a little bit here. We went with the LS1. We moved the battery to the other side just to have a little bit more room with the setup that we went with. Have air conditioner, works. We got the drive-by wire. So that's what we got on the pedal. Show y'all guys just a quick run through. We changed the gearbox to a different ratio so it turns a lot quicker. I like it. It's from a newer Monte Carlo. The shaft right there that goes to the gearbox. We also changed that one out. It has no play on this one like it did on the old one. But we replaced that as well. All the wiring. We got a three row radiator. There's the cooling fans. Here's where some of our big wires are at. Our relays. We have a fuel pump relay. And then we have the two relays for the fans. We custom ordered some wheels for it from Rush Forth. And I like them. I like the way they sit. They're 18s. We ordered these up here up front we ordered them online we got some led lights they look they look original but they're super bright super awesome we painted it ourselves twice and then i took it to this guy to do some body work painted it took off the vinyl top it was all rusted out so i had to buy another card or cut out and they replaced that for me I bought another car because they said the doors were rusted. So I bought another car to get some doors, replace that, and still need some work. We're going to get this, some of this stuff done. The gaps aren't right, but we'll get to that. The paint, as soon as I got it back, I started getting some bubbles. I'll show one right here. Not fun. I got a few bubbles. I have some paint falling off on the other side. We went with the Monte Carlo Super Sport spoiler. Here's the other side. I have some pictures when they cut out and did some of the body work, which they did the body work, the welding, you can't tell where it was. They did a good job on that. Just the paint didn't come back like I wanted it. It's, it's not shiny evenly all the way across, but that's just the way we got it back. And we'll have to redo that at some point. We got stuff like this going on on the door got another rough spot right here see i'm not just going to show you guys what looks pretty i'll show you exactly what the cutlass needs came back like this from the shop as well broken lens here so i gotta replace that paint's falling off on that already ordered this hood also i didn't want the stock one i kind of wanted this style of hood which I think it looks okay I don't know if we leave it that way or just go back regular one but also there's a dent right here came like that from the shop I asked them about this so they must have hit it with something but didn't fix it they wanted me to take it to some dent repair place so I didn't do that yet the interior is original this is what it had back in the day it's all worn this is the original seats. I need a headliner for sure. We're working on that. Now this is gonna show you exactly how it is. We're running the Terminator X Max, which runs both. Got our gauges here. Dakota Digital. Very, very, very nice. I like it. I have a brand new carpet that I need to put in here. We're planning on doing something with the interior. The dashboard needs some help, but just showing you exactly how it is. And hopefully as we're fixing things, you guys will be the first ones to see it. My mirror used to look good, but it was thrown outside. We 
literally I went back and said, hey, I'm missing my rear view mirror and they picked it up from outside in the dirt, the grass, whatever. So, <clears throat> I don't know, some stuff needs to be done, but it'll get there, it'll get there. I wanna add the, the cruise control, see if we can do that. I've taken it on road trips and we're planning on taking some more road trips and documenting and putting them on the channel as well for you guys to check it out, see if it runs, see if we have any problems, you know, et cetera, with this, with this swap. As soon as we did the swap, about a thousand miles later, I went to the store, turned it back on and it was missing. The AFR was, I mean, red, hitting red, up 35 plus, and it was the O2 sensor. So Holly was nice enough to just ship me one free of charge. We put it on, it's been working since. Now we've ran it about 45, 4,600 miles. We haven't had an issue since. Holly did a good thing. I was pretty impressed. I wasn't expecting that. I was just gonna buy another one. We put a new dryer. We custom made some lines here, ordered some stuff, kinda had a shop here press them for us. Transmission dipstick. Dad fabricated this for me. We also ordered these online, replaced them because the other ones look very, very, very old. Also, we got the windows tinted in Lubbock at a shop. And I'm probably missing a lot of stuff, guys. If I forget some stuff, I'll put it in other videos. All right, guys, so I'll put it on the lift. That way we can just show you. Here's our LS1 from underneath. We got some QA1 upper and lower control arms. We got the Viking coolovers up front. Right now I have it set up for comfort, but I might change it for handling and see what it does. We changed the whole spindle from a 2000 blazer. So no more greasing bearings or anything like that. It's all sealed. And also put the, the calipers off the same blazer. Proportioning valve right here, we replaced it. So we went all disc, just as when we put the rear in. We got our 4L60E installed, and it's a level two from Mad Dog Transmissions. Check them guys out on the internet. And I got a level two, which can handle up to 500 horsepower, which we're pushing around 450-ish or so. That's what we're guesstimating. Here's the cross member. Got another aftermarket cross member. We have our three inch pipe all the way back. We tried an X pipe. Mm, I wasn't too sure it sounds good, but kind of rather this sound is just louder. And we went with the SLP, two SLP resonators. Pretty loud, pretty loud. All the way back, three inch. On the back, we went with the nine inch rear end from Quick Performance. So we got it all installed here. We went disc brakes as well. They're getting rusty. I was gonna paint them. Didn't have time, we washed the car for the car show and now I got a little bit of rust to deal with, but I got the paint in and we're gonna clean it up one of these days and, and paint them. I wanna put some coal overs in the back, get rid of them springs, those shocks, and just go coal over, we'll see. We got the UMI Performance. Bar the tower brace to kinda of help brace the car since we did a notch. We did a notch to fit these 315s wide tires. We had to order this U-joint here to fit from G-body fit to the nine inch. So we got that in there. We got our lines all together. Ordered some of these from Quick Performance to hold our lines. Worked pretty good. Also guys, when we went fuel injected, this is an old style tank, it doesn't have a vent, and they said to use a vented cap. I tried that, 
but it doesn't seem to work very well when it's full and it's a hot day it leaks out fuel so if you have any ideas let me know i'm still working on the how to vent it properly and do all that so let me know what you guys did made a notch on the frame to fit these 315s we rolled the fenders we also did all the all the weather stripping new all the way around right here all the way around it's already turned a little bit but it was new and then we did all the way down around the, the door as well new windshield my dad has helped me from day one on building this car my dad and i have done a lot of work spent lots of hours sweat oh everything has been it's been a long journey my dad without my dad this wouldn't be done my dad knows a lot and he's the one that's taught me he used to overhaul engines when i was a kid all the time fix cars everybody would bring their cars to my dad I would hold the light for him while he did everything. So I picked up a lot from just watching. I'm an old man already and I still go to my dad. When I get stuck, when I'm gonna do a project, I call my dad, I want him to be watching, make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't like to do things twice. I'd like to say thanks to my dad because he's done a lot and he's a very smart man. He knows a lot. He can figure out anything. So he's helped me on this build. Had my buddy Sammy Martinez help me on the LS swap on all the newer stuff. We know more of the old. Sammy helped us kind of hook up some what goes where kind of thing. So shout out to my friend as well. All right guys, so here's the LED lights. Pretty bright. Look good on the highway. Another thing I forgot to show you guys, let me, just, let me start it right quick. All right guys, so that's a, I left some stuff out, I'm sure there's a lot. I got everything written down that we've done and it's it's a lot more than, than I just talked about, I'm sure. But we're gonna take a quick just run, just so y'all know that y'all can see the car running, that it runs good, it ships good. I'll take it up to the highway speed and runs good. We're gonna roll down the windows, turn off the AC so we can hear that V8 roar. Sounds great. One last thing I wanted to let you guys know, and we built this car to drive it, to take some road trips. I don't believe in just building something or buying a car and just have it parked and never use it. I want to, I want to drive it. I drive miles and miles. I bought a new truck and I don't know how many miles it's got now. I don't worry about miles. I just want to enjoy the car. All the work you put into it, money, it takes all that. Drive it, enjoy it take it out so guys drive y'all's cars have fun and keep building <laughs> 